It's not like any other podcast. Coming to you straight from the heartland, where investing is told like it is. It's time for Darren Garman's Paranoid Banker Podcast. Hold on, because here comes the next episode of the Paranoid Banker Podcast. Well, hi everybody, Darren Garman here, and welcome to the podcast. We are already well into 2018 unbelievable how fast time goes by isn't it and you know growing up so when I was growing up I lived with um, my grandma my grandfather my uncle and my mother Um, and so I was around older people a lot growing up and so uh, especially with grandma and grandpa and even to more of a degree with my uncle um Always was, you know, gee, how fast time goes by. You really better live in the moment now. It'll be, you know, before you know it, you'll be 20, 30, 40. And you know what I'm talking about. When you're young or younger, you think the old people are, you know, acting old, right? You think they're, oh, yeah, sure, whatever, Grandpa. Uh huh. Fine, okay, I'm back. I need to get back to what I'm doing. Uh, but how wise they were. As a matter of fact, I've got kind of a funny story about my grandfather. So, um, so my grandfather was the kind of guy that liked to putter around, you know, fix the lawnmower in the wintertime and mess around with that and get that, you know, running as efficiently as possible and cleaned up and ready to go. Snowblower in the summertime, you know, he's working on that, cleaning that up and oiling and fixing it and doing this and doing that and tightening this. And, and so uh, he was in the garage a lot, puttering around with stuff. And one day in the summertime, I'll never forget this. Uh, I was over at Buddy's house, and I came home, and he's in the garage, of course, working on the snowblower. It's like July. <laughs> he's working on the snowblower. And so I come up to him. I said, hey, Grandpa, how you doing? He said, good. I said, give me five. So I got my hand up in the air, you know, waiting for him to slap me five, right? And he looks at me kind of strange, and, um, and he says, well, Darren, um, right now I don't have five, but I got a couple dollars on me. Can I, would, you, would you take a couple? Would that be okay? And uh, <laughs> I said, no, no, Grandpa, what I'm talking about is I just want you to give me five, like slap my hand. Oh, okay, so I had to kind of show him how to, you know, give me five. And he actually thought I meant, you know, money, give me five. Well, I don't have five. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so anyway, so glad to have you. And, and what we're going to be doing in, in this week's podcast is not wasting your time, uh, since it does go by so fast, uh, we're going to be talking about something that uh, I think is, um, I think, obvious to some, but maybe not to everybody. And if it's obvious to you, you've been, um, you've kind of had your antenna up and have seen it. If it's not obvious to you, uh, that, that doesn't mean anything like you're, uh, you know, you're not. Uh, in any way uh, um, ignorant of what's going on or you're not in any way um, dumb to the fact I mean so so if you don't if you aren't really aware of what I'm going to cover I didn't I did a bad job of explaining that didn't I um, if, if you're not really aware of what I'm going to be talking about it's not a big deal because it's not that obvious it's more obvious to folks like me, who are in the roles and positions on a daily basis to see it, and uh, and those folks that are in similar fields um, uh, that that I am, and in similar situations than that that I am, um, that see this kind of thing. Uh, and in it is really about what I consider the main reason why, or the number one reason why, apartments and rental property will continue to grow at an exponential rate. And when I talk about grow, my definition of growing is twofold. Uh, Rental income and rental properties will continue to grow exponentially in A, the income that they produce, and B, in the value of the properties. 
So in other words, this one reason is not the reason why you're going to be seeing large jumps in income and returns that apartment properties produce, large jumps in property value over the next two to three years. This is not the reason, but it is the main reason why you are going to be seeing this. And some of you, and I've talked to some of you already, have seen this and are starting to see it and are starting to notice it. And if you haven't yet, you will. It's coming. And um, and for us that are uh, owners of these apartment properties and plan on owning more, uh, I think this is exciting. And before I jump into and tell you what specifically I'm talking about, I will admit what I'm talking about is a little bit prediction. Yeah, it's a little crystal ballish if you follow me. And I'm not a big fan of that. So I'm not a big fan of you know tuning into <clears throat> some guru and finding out what they think is going to happen over the next year, two years, five years. Uh, because frankly, 99% of them are wrong. And <clears throat> frankly, I could be wrong with what I'm telling you. So I don't have a um, an ego that big where, uh, where I can't say uh, that what I'm talking to you about right now, I could be dead wrong. But I don't think I am, because I'm going to tell you what I think, but who knows? Two years from now, we may be talking to each other, and you could be saying, hey, Darren, what about that prediction that you were talking about? How wrong were you there? Well, yeah, you're right, I was. Um, I don't think that's going to be the case, but um, but I'm not a big fan of crystal balls and predictions. But I want to share with you what I think is the main reason you're going to see massive increases in returns from apartment properties over the next three years. Again, not the reason, but the main reason. And it's pretty simple, really. And the reason is three words. Cost of living. Okay? I'll say it again. Cost of living. Now, you're probably sitting there or listening or standing or running or if you're on the treadmill or heck sitting in a chair or listening to me in your car or maybe even on your computer, wherever it is, you're probably sitting there thinking, well, what's what's the big revelation there, Darren? I mean, cost of living. Oh, so what? Well, I want you to think about this for just a minute. Let's start with the basic premise that we all know, and that is everybody pretty much needs a roof over their head, right? So everybody needs a place to live. And so let's start with that. But I want you in your mind's eye to picture just a, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of a bar graph. And the graph has, you know, an x-axis and a y-axis. So it's got an axis that's horizontal and one that's vertical, right? So right in the middle of that, at a 45 degree angle, continuing to go up is cost of living. Every year, the cost of living increases big time. Um, a lot of people would say, well, you're just talking about inflation. And yeah, I suppose I am. Um, but I'm also talking about, in a general sense, <clears throat> what it costs to live a average lifestyle today and how it has changed so much not only over the last few years, but over the last 20 years. So, gone are the days of one person working, and let's say it's a couple situation, married couple, uh, living together, man, woman, women, men, whatever, doesn't matter. Couples living together, okay? Gone are the days where the majority of people living together can have one, I'll just call it spouse um, or significant other, working and one not. Gone are those days. Now, do they still exist? Sure. There are millions of um, families where uh, one person works and for most it's the man and uh, mom stays home 
and takes care of the house, maybe has a few hobbies and kind of makes sure the kids are doing what they're supposed to be doing. There's still a lot of that. There's millions of that right now. Okay. So in no way am I saying that this is gone. It's still there. But it is a sliver of what it used to be. Now you have most people, most average Americans, everybody's got to work. That's to basically make ends meet. That's to pay the bills. Okay. So in order for people to pay the bills, have a little spending money, maybe go out to eat here once in a while, maybe spend a little bit of money on a hobby, um, and oh, by the way, to even save some money too, you got to throw that in there, right? Everybody's got to be working. And let me ask you this. Our wages and what most people do, what most people's skills are, are they going up and increasing at the same rate that the cost of living is? Two words for you. Hell no, it's not. Not even close. So if you want to... Um, Pay your living expenses, whether it's renting an apartment or owning your own home uh, or condominium. Have a car or two. Um, have, uh, you know, the electronics. You want a good TV, stereo system. You want decent furniture. Um, you want good furnishings throughout the place. Oh, not only that, but do you want a, if you want a hobby. Um, oh, gee whiz, if you want a pet, that's a whole new ball game. So you want a pet. Uh, maybe you're into sports. Maybe you want to get season tickets to a uh, sports. I mean, pretty soon you're out of money and you're out of money quickly, which is why everybody's got to work. And the problem is the young people and my definition of young people right now getting into, let's just call it the job market. Let's say between the ages of 22 and 32. It is tough. It's tough to get out there and make enough money to pay the bills. It's hard. Super hard. I would say arguably it's the hardest it's ever been today. Okay. Everybody's got to work just to pay the bills. And I'm talking about average American is what I'm talking about. Um, so what do most people end up doing? Well, most people end up wanting and getting into things that are above their means. So what do they do? That's right, they rack up debt. So whether it's, in some cases, home equity debt. Uh, for most people, it's credit card debt, though, isn't it? Um, we have the most credit card debt as a nation than we've ever had. I don't know how many billions of dollars it is. Um, I read it and I internalized it, but I can't remember the exact figure. You probably might know. Uh, and the average person's debt is growing by something like, I don't know, 10% a year, something like that. And why is that? Because cost of living. We can't afford the things that we should be affording, so we want a little bit more, but the things that we want are out of our reach, so we end up racking up debt to get them. And I'm not necessarily talking about like the big spending things. So I'm not talking about racking up big credit card debt on um, on the brand new entertainment system or uh, let's say a new boat or a jet ski or anything like that. I'm not really talking about that. I'm talking about smaller things. Maybe you wanted to get the kids the new Apple Watch, for example. Okay. Maybe mom wanted to buy her husband um, that new piece of jewelry that he talked about, maybe a new watch. Um, or maybe a wristband that he really liked. Um, maybe uh, the, the um, uh, one, one, one person wanted to buy their significant other, maybe that workout um, new uh, Fitbit Garmin thing where you got the heart rate monitor and you buy all that and you hook yourself. Maybe they wanted to buy that. So I'm not necessarily talking about big transactions here. I'm talking about slowly eating away at people's net worth is comes down to one thing cost of living increases is not keeping up with wages or it's actually the other way around I'm sorry 
wages and income is not keeping up with cost of living. And so people make enough barely to pay the bills for the most part, and not even including saving money. And in order to get some of the other things that they want, and I'm not even talking extravagant stuff, they go into debt and our credit card debt is in the trillions, probably I believe it's actually trillions of dollars. I said billions before. That is the biggest reason why apartments will explode and continue to explode. Why? Because it comes down to two words, folks. Affordable housing. Okay, And I'm not talking low-income housing here. That's not what I mean. Because a lot of times when people hear affordable housing, they think, oh, you're talking about low-income. No, I'm talking about the most affordable place for people to live, especially the younger generation getting out of high school, getting out of college, and getting into the job market. You know what they're finding? They're finding jobs in the $25,000, $35,000 range. That's what most of them are finding, more, more, and more so on the lower end of that scale. I'm just saying, even in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, you're not going to be doing great if you're making thirty dollars a year. You're not. You're barely making ends meet. And this is Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I mean, I can't imagine in larger cities and more larger metropolitan areas, right? It's not easy, and it's tough. So where can people live that is the most affordable place to allow them to have money left over? Where? Well, where is it? That's right. Apartments. It's exactly where it is. And so... There's, and what I've just mentioned to you is the main reason why we are so focused on our apartment portfolios right now and acquiring more worthy properties is that. And if you do a little bit of research, and like I said in the beginning of this podcast, you probably have seen it. Um, a lot of the big dogs out there, by big dogs, I'm talking about big investment companies with well-known names, and you've heard them over the years. The reason why they're out there buying 2,000 houses at once or 10,000 apartment units at once and renting them out is because of what I'm telling you right now. They see the writing on the wall. They know. We see the writing on the wall, and it's there. And again, am I saying that we're right? Only time will tell, right? Only time will tell. And we're not doing it because I see other people doing it or vice versa. I am involved in the property asset management, property management business every day. I see it nose to nose, toes to toes with what's going on out there. And it's there. Cost of living, huge. And oh, heaven forbid somebody loses a job, by the way. I'm going to tell you guys a story. Um, and it's about actually one of my staff members. So this is one of my employees. Okay. So one of my employees comes into my office not too long ago, very sad and with a problem, and wanted to know if I could help. Here was the problem. Her car broke down. Going to need repairs. It's going to need to spend money on towing. So like the repairs are going to be something like $800. And this is a young lady that makes pretty good money. Guess what she didn't have? That's right. Didn't have the money to take care of the repairs that she was going to have to make, get the vehicle towed, et cetera, et cetera and wondered if I could help her out temporarily, okay? Now, if you think that this is an isolated incident, it's not. Most people are a big um, car breaking down episode away from not having enough money to take care of things. So what do they end up doing? That's right. They end up borrowing the money usually on a credit card or from somewhere else to take care of the issue. <clears throat> okay. So what does all this translate into other than, okay, Darren, we get your point. Cost of living, 
out, <clears throat> is outpacing income that uh, most Americans are making. And what that means is most people as a result are going to be uh, more and more flocking towards affordable places to live. What's, what's, what's the significance of that? Um, the significance is this is not going to get better. It is going to get worse. So the reason why many of you have not fully seen this yet is because where you're at, it, you haven't, it hasn't reached a point where now you're noticing it. But it's headed there, and it's headed there everywhere. Whether it's next year, two years from now, three years from now. I mean, our window is like three years. You're going to really be seeing it. Um, and that's at a point where I say now you start having the proverbial line out the door of the rental office of people in line wanting to rent apartments because of the affordability of apartments versus owning your own home or your own condominium. The cost, the qualification, and the maintenance and the upkeep that that entails. And by the way, there's no way that I'm saying that people are not buying their own homes or their own condos. I mean, I drive around, heck, I drive around the Cedar Rapids area all the time, and I see new developments going on. Houses, condos, they're putting them up, they're selling them. So yeah, I'm not saying that that's the case at all. But more and more people buy the truckloads every day are migrating towards apartments versus single-family homes because of this reason. This isn't the only reason. There are others, and we won't go into those right now because then we'd have a two-hour podcast, and we both don't want a two-hour podcast. Um, but it is one of the main reasons. And if you haven't seen it, believe me, you will. So what should you do about this? Um, I'm recommending to people uh, to find a place to park your money that is a well-located, well-maintained apartment property and park your money there. Um, you don't necessarily have to be a property manager. There are ways around that. But that's something you really need to be looking at. And by the way, it's not really a bad idea, especially if you've got some money in the hot stock market right now, to be taking your profits and shifting them over to this. Because this is where the action is going to be in the next two to three years. It's not going to be in the Dow. Um, I'm telling you that. Uh, and uh, I know some of my uh, colleagues and partners are doing just that. They are moving money. They see the forces that are moving wealth right now, really moving in this direction. So they're being proactive right now and taking advantage of it by getting involved in more ownership of, um, of apartment properties uh, because of it. Because if you really look forward to the end of all this, once more, and you know how investing goes, once everybody's on the bandwagon, that's the time to do what? That's time to sell, right? So, I mean, it's with any investment. Once it hits fever pitch and it's what everybody wants, that's not the time to buy more of it. That's the time to sell it. And so that's going to be the case with apartments. You're going to see institutional investors, large limited partnerships. You're going to see people out there looking to get a piece of this once they really start to figure it out. And as I said earlier in the podcast, you see it already with some companies, but not nearly even close to where it's going to be here in the next two or three years. Okay, So my advice to you is that get yourself involved in an apartment property, a well-located, well-maintained one as soon as you can. Um, and as I said, you don't have to be a manager. There are ways around that. Um, and in addition... Keep your antenna up. See if what I'm saying is going on where you are right now, where you live. See if you see the same kinds of thing. Um, and I know many of you will. But if you haven't been paying attention to it, start. Uh, I think it'll be interesting for you. 
And if you have been paying attention to it, keep focusing in on it. Uh, you're going to find some interesting things happening over the next two or three years. Okay. And so cost of living, think about that and think about how it's going to affect those other two words, affordable housing. Okay. Um, that's going to end this week's podcast. I appreciate you taking the time to listen and I am always, always interested in your comments. You've got my email address. If you don't, it's easy to find. Uh, send me an email. Would love to get some dialogue from you and your thoughts and what you think based on what I've talked about on this podcast and would look forward to hearing from you. I really would. All right. So have a great day, night, morning, weekend, whatever it is for you. Uh, have a good one. We'll be talking to you soon. We'll see you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining Darren Garman's Paranoid Banker Podcast. For investment questions, comments, or to get in touch with Darren, go to www.garmanblog.com.